Welcome back to News Center. Of course, the conversation is the ongoing crisis, the doctor's uh, health uh, strike crisis in the country. And in studio, I have been speaking to Dr. Sultan Matendichero. He's the Deputy Director General for the, from the Ministry of Health. I mean, we've talked a lot about the interns a bit earlier. But you've also mentioned that you were previously the Secretary General of KMPDU and a former unionist. How do you think you would have handled the strike if you were in that position? Would you have handled it a bit differently from what we're seeing right now? So, um, what, what, you know, this also just goes back to what I was saying about uh, collective bargaining. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the challenges that I faced as a union leader was uh, difficulties in being able to establish a bargaining environment. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, in fact, even being able to see the minister was very hard, or mm -hmm. even the principal secretary or even top leadership. We were forcefully thrown out of our house whenever we tried to go there. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that, uh, you know, uh, I have, uh, now I am in uh, management, one of the things that I've really tried to, uh, to encourage or advocate for mm -hmm. is a good, uh, you know, bargaining environment. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, you know, whenever the union leaders come, they are able to see us. Sometimes we even suspend what we are doing. Mm -hmm. Even the top leadership, they keep on meeting the minister, the principal secretary. So there's a lot of uh, leeway for discussions to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, the expectation, because having understood uh, the whole issue of unionism, it is not bad to engage in uh, discussions in a labor relation. Right. So you have the latitude to be able to discuss your issues and to solve them without really having to, to hurt the patients. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, initially the only, uh, the, the only recourse was now to withdraw services so that now we can get the attention of government. Mm -hmm. But now it is not entirely necessary because the attention is there. Mm -hmm. In fact, when you look at uh, the issues of unionism, mm -hmm. the primary reason why union members go on strike is to get the attention of the employer so that the employer can come onto the table. Right. But uh, now we have situations where the employer is, has all your, you have the, the whole attention, but still, you are, you are now saying, uh, we are not going to discuss, you have to meet these uh, demands uh, while we are on strike. So the, the, the reason for striking becomes that now, this is the, our bargaining. Now bargaining is the strike. Mm -hmm. But you see, as we are bargaining, people are losing their lives. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, even now, some of us are parents. Yeah, we have children who have gone through school, they have gone through university. We've really spent a lot of money trying to get them to, to that space. Right. Now, I can only imagine what would happen if uh, you have been able to pay for all that. And then now there's an opportunity for your daughter or your son to now go through the last part, which is one year, get licensed, mm -hmm. and then now also get employment to start supporting. Yeah. But then they are not going into that because they have been told, no, 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 you know, we have to get uh, a certain amount and so just stay at home. Don't even uh, go and pick those letters. It is a bit frustrating mm -hmm. that uh, a parent who has gone through all this, now the children are at home, they are not uh, working, they are delaying their licensing just because we want to be able to get a certain amount of, of, uh, of money. Mm -hmm. So I think... For me, the main message becomes, right. I, I really don't want us to go into a situation as if we are now uh, quarreling or we are trying to compete and see who is better at arguing than mm -hmm. the other. I think for me, what I would really like to appeal to everybody, mm -hmm. you know, not just the doctors, but uh, even my colleagues at the ministry, everybody in government, the media, the community members, right. let us get into this conversation. Mm -hmm. Let us move towards a situation where we can take advantage of the collective bargaining environment that we have created. Right. So that we can be able to discuss mm -hmm. while services are going on mm -hmm. in the facilities. But you know now the, the talks have collapsed, right? With the doctors. Why is that the case? What's, what's going on? Because it's all about coming to the table and negotiating. Mm -hmm. But now the talks have collapsed. What's, what's happening from the government's perspective? Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, uh, these, uh, uh, you've talked about uh, the talks that are going on. Mm -hmm. These ones had to be uh, facilitated by the courts. And you see, that's what we are saying. When we have a collective bargaining agreement, we don't really need the court mm -hmm. to force us to come onto the table. Mm -hmm. So the court ordered that uh, we must convene, mm -hmm. which was done. Mm -hmm. And they gave several orders. 
Actually, they gave six orders. Mm -hmm. Now, the sixth order was that to facilitate the talks, the union should stay the strike. So that we can, you know, you cannot uh, negotiate when somebody is holding a, a knife to, to your umbilical cord or something, or mm -hmm. to your neck, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, stay the strike so that we can have an environment to discuss and agree. Mm -hmm. So when we went into the meeting, mm -hmm. uh, the, the union had not stayed the strike. Mm -hmm. So, of course, now the government side was asking, but now you have not complied to order number six. So how do we proceed? Because this one now invalidates the legality of mm -hmm. this meeting. Mm -hmm. So can we be able to comply with order number six, we stay the strike, mm -hmm. so that we carry on with the talks. Mm -hmm. But they said, no, as we just want to continue st uh, going on strike while we negotiate. And that was the difficulty that mm -hmm. uh, we experienced. Mm -hmm. But then you see now the message that came out mm -hmm. was that the government has walked out of the talks. Just on that which bit. Was, uh, which was not uh, correct. Yeah. Yeah. On that bit, on the collapsed talks, actually we have Dr. Kahura Mundia from Camp PD on the line who's been listening in. And I just want to engage him now from the Camp PDU perspective. Dr. Kahura, if you can hear me, you've listened to what Dr. Sultan is talking about in terms of the collapsed talks. What is really happening from your perspective now with regard to what he's talked about from the government side? Well, thank you. And uh, the position as we are having today is the fact that the government has been on a show of bad faith since 2017. They're not engaging in good faith. All that they're doing is taking us round and round. And they have rushed to court to try and stop us engaging in good faith. First of all, they have failed to implement and honor the CBA. Now, that failure to honor the CBA is the reason why we are calling them out and the reason why we want them to just abide by the CBA and incrementally build up where we left the conversation seven years ago. But now to derogate the CBA, to go and have the SRC issue invalid advisory, the SRC is abusing, the commissioner is abusing office because they're making on their own personal guidance to themselves without involving the stakeholders. And that's why we're saying it's illegal to post a party on the table when you yourself have defied the order of things. So that's why the government is on this. The government is on strike. The doctors just want to engage and have their CBA implemented. They have, they have called the CBA bad names because they don't understand what a CBA means in the world of labor. These are documents that have been in existence for over 100 years under the International Labor Organization. But because persons in the Ministry of Health eh, don't understand these things, they have to play around with Kenyans' health. Doctors want to serve Kenya. We are supporting SHIFT, we are supporting UHC, and we are reminding them we are ready to go to work as long as they abide by the CBA. Anything else on the table is non negotiable because you already negotiated with the previous government. Successor government cannot come and start saying, now whatever you negotiated was not well done. You need to redo it again and rework the map. That's retrogressive. Whatever the government is proposing to pay doctors as pay cuts, it, it's what doctors earned 20 years ago. And we cannot have persons and pick just a particular cadre in the whole public service and slash their pay. That proposal is retrogressive. If it's everyone in the country who is supposed to get a pay cut, we should begin with the leadership. Pay cuts for all because we cannot sustain our wage bill. But not just pick on doctors who are offering the best services to Kenyans. Because doctors in Kenya are known for their excellent services. And that's what we are ready to give. Any day, even if it's today, tomorrow, they just abide by the CBA. They withdraw all the invalid comments and the letters. And we are ready to work. Right. Dr. Dr. Kahura, yeah. there's also the issue with uh, regards to the interns, the medical interns being posted and the amount of money that they're supposed to be getting. And Dr. Sultan yeah. has also talked about that there is now uh, the, an issue with the allocation of the money that is supposed to be given. Now, the, the new batch will be getting a bit less. What, are, what, are, what is the standpoint for KMPD on this? On that position, you see, these are doctors. They're our junior doctors. You see, every, do every, every sector has a pyramid. At the highest mode, you have the consultant. On the lower base, we have the junior doctors who are these in time. Now, these doctors, they are protected under employment laws, under international law, under the CBA. They are protected. You cannot remove them and expose them to hardship just because you feel you have not done your job, which is to budget and ask for the budget. In 2022, when the minister was newly appointed, she is quoted on TV 
that she is going to slash pay. That was in 2022. So this is a scheme that the government or the persons of the Ministry of Health were tasked to do, to lower or to provide pay cuts for doctors in the health sector. It's illegal. It's an abuse of international law and conventions about fair relations and uh, decent work. And that's why we're calling out the Director General and the Deputy Director General. They are misadvising the government. And they know very well. They were paid that 30000 20 years ago. Now, today's inflation cannot allow a doctor to be paid as such. When they're toiling 24 hours a day at the workplace, doing all the menial kind of jobs, that's indecent. And persons should be called out for that. Right. I want to give the Deputy Director General an opportunity to just respond to some of the things that you've talked about, including the talks and the interns. What, what, what do you have to say with regard to what he's talked about? Yeah, so it takes me back to what I said in the beginning. You know, um, a collective bargaining arrangement, uh, especially in the health sector, is a very delicate space. Because uh, when we now resort to taking very hard stance, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are saying that uh, you must do this, regardless of what, uh, you know, the situation is, then uh, we end up having a situation where patients will really... Because they are the, they are the scapegoats here. Mm -hmm. You know, they are the kind of like... Uh, I don't know what you call it. They are the, we, are, we are holding them at ransom. Mm -hmm. So it is the patients who are bearing the brunt. So you need to do this so that the patients stop suffering. They are innocent. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a lot of valid reasons why this crisis is, uh, is, is obtaining. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is... Uh, and even the law tries to... Uh, to limit industrial action within uh, certain spaces like the health sector mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, where essential services are being provided. Mm -hmm. Because if we get to a point where we cannot take advantage of that platform, then now we start uh, taking very hardline stance, then it will result in loss of lives. Mm -hmm. So it is important, and that's why I say, I wouldn't really want us to get into a situation where we start now, mm -hmm. uh, form, you know, like even using the media as a platform for exchanging and making allegations and, you know, we are getting into an argument contest and, you know, making a lot of allegations, some of them not even accurate, because it only serves to escalate the problem. But you say what, if, yeah. what I would really want to appeal is mm -hmm. we try to have a situation, everybody plays their part, in trying to make sure that we have a situation where mm -hmm. we can come back and discuss. There mm -hmm. are reasons why all these, uh, you know, the things that are being complained about are obtaining. Mm -hmm. So we can be able to compare notes in a place which is not, you know, now it's like we are standing on rooftops with microphones and shouting at mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to mm -hmm. uh, achieve a, a resolution. Mm -hmm. So while we are talking, we resume services so mm -hmm. that we take care of that lady who was at uh, Mama Lucy. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, when she went to a private hospital, she was asked for 300 shillings. Mm -hmm. She didn't have. But you see, and, in this uh, case, you see, yeah. the life of her child or her patient depends mm -hmm. on that 300 shillings. Mm -hmm. Me and you, we might be able to afford even more. Mm -hmm. But for the majority of people who are waiting for us to engage in uh, shouting marches yeah. and then we finish, by the time we finish, they will be dead. But as much as... And we will as, not be able to yeah, bring them back. As much you know? as the mandate of the doctors is to take care of the patients and, you know, treat the patients, they mm. also have their own issues, their own well-being that they're thinking about. Absolutely. Don't you think that's also crucial for them? Extremely crucial. And uh, that's why I'm saying, instead of uh, now us getting into situations where we are getting into shouting matches, we are getting into very strong arguments, and we have kept the services on hold, mm -hmm. let us sit down and discuss and see the best way of being able to address these issues mm -hmm. within the obtaining mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel very uncomfortable when uh, I have to now come and start, you know, uh, trying to now justify on, right. uh, on, on media, mm -hmm. justify. So it looks like now we are, we are standing on different positions. Mm -hmm. It is the government against the union. That is not what is supposed to happen. We mm -hmm. are actually supposed, with a collective bargaining arrangement, mm -hmm. we are supposed to be government and the union mm -hmm. on the one side mm -hmm. addressing the, the difficulties within the health sector. Right. But you see now when we get into such a situation and then we stick in it so much, mm -hmm. like in 2017 there was a strike that lasted for 100 days. Yeah. 
A lot of people died. Mm -hmm. It was not a good thing. Mm -hmm. So when we get to that position, now even you, you start finding that people are getting scared of yeah. getting into these uh, collective bargaining arrangements, which my colleague uh, Kaura Mundia mm -hmm. has correctly said, this is the international best practice. Right. You know, right. for employer-employee relations, mm -hmm. you need to get into collective bargaining arrangements. But then we also need to be responsible mm -hmm. so that we don't use those collective uh, bargaining arrangements to now hold uh, people at ransom, mm -hmm. you know, innocent people who do not deserve uh, uh, to, be, to be the ones who are bearing the brand. Right. Yeah. Thank you. I think this has been a very... Deep and informative conversation. Um, uh, I don't think we have Dr. Kahura on the line, but thank you so much, Dr. Sultan, for your time. Uh, okay, so I hear he's still on the line. So I just want to give him the last um, opportunity to say something. Dr. Kahura, you've listened to what Dr. Sultan has talked about uh, yes, from the government perspective. So I want to get your final thoughts on this thank particular you. issue. Okay, well, my position is this. The reason why the employer goes into an arrangement which is known as a collective bargaining is because we all want one thing, harmony in every sector, be it healthcare, police sector, be it the transport sector, all these unions in the world of labor, we all aspire to have harmony. And that's why we take time, a lot of time, to engage, give, give and take, give and take, until we settle down to a collective bargaining agreement. That is a formalization of now final agreement, that I'm happy with what I've said, I'm happy with what I've said it. You ask for public stakeholders to come and give them their views, and that is done and settled. Now, when that is concluded, now you cannot come another day and start saying, oh, I, I never did the best thing. Uh, I'm probably forgetful about what we agreed upon, and now I need to come and change the terms unilaterally. And because I'm government, I can change them, I can, I can do whatever I want because I'm government. We choose government because we believe in the right to protect and defend Kenya. Kenyans deserve health care. And today, the government is standing between doctors and the patients and restricting doctors to go to see their patients because government wants pay cuts, pay cuts for doctors. Only doctors in the whole of Kenya, I don't know whether there's any other cadre which is, has been targeted as such to have pay cuts. Now, for you to perform your work comfortably, to be well motivated, to be able to meet your daily needs, to have a living wage, you must be accorded decent work. Funny contracts have been given to doctors. Doctors have no insurance. They propose 30,000, cannot even pay for a house in Nairobi. So mm -hmm. it's very absurd that why the city right. director general Thank is not so even much, proposing yeah. a pay cut for themselves. Right, of course. Thank you so much. That's uh, Dr. Kahura Mundia from KMPDU, just giving us a perspective from uh, the union side and in studio. I was joined by Dr. Sultan Matendachero. He is the Deputy Director General, Minister of Health. Of course, the conversation is ongoing. Dr. Strike, that is on day 23, actually. I hope uh, we'll be able to have a solution just for the sake of patients. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Right, that's why we wrap up New Center. Thank you so much for watching. Yanayo Jiri is up next. <laughs>